Megamind Space Style DreamWorks logo. And a logo to movie transition to maybe even impress Edgar Wright? So a couple of things here. This movie is just like the king of expectations of version. It's a comedy, so maybe you don't have a ton of expectations, but still. Megamind leaves his broken Kryptonian knockoff homeworld while missing his destiny proclamation. You are destined. While starting a rivalry with a much more super looking neighbor. All while their planets are spectacularly sucked into some kind of gorgeous black hole vortex of death just for a gag. A baby! How awful! Oh, yes, yes, I saw it and thought of you. Our baby can fly! Yes, yes, nothing but the best for you, darling. Generosity. <laughs> Metro Man warning his adoptive mother not to tickle him too much. A little character building by literally building Minion's first suit as a young tyke. I learned how to dehydrate animate objects and rehydrate them at will. And setting up the Chekhoviest gun that ever Chekhoved. He would win some, I would almost win others. Optimism. What a different villain origin story. The entire idea feels so fleshed out. The reminder that his entire life has been spent in prison with the murals in his cell. You never get the feeling that Megamind resents his life, it just is. He's just the bad guy. <laughs> you'll never change, and you'll never leave. You're fun. J.K. Simmons is fun. That's funny. Never thought Metro Man was the gloating type. Ha! <laughs> because he actually isn't. The continuity in this film is astounding. His heart is an ocean that's inside a bigger ocean. Descriptiveness win. And I'd be watching you like a dingo watches a human baby. Mm. Malicious, stalkery, evil, and side shadowing. Okay, so this is something that I love about this film. Its ability to poke fun at the silliness of an invisible car. Not only should everyone be able to see the light refracting around it, but just to hit a guy and is leaving a huge wake of destruction. But they still use all these silly comic book tropes as part of the narrative successfully. <laughs> J.K. Simmons is always a win. While our hero is juggling babies, I'd like to talk about how smart it is to use an Elvis Presley song for our good guy, while every song used for Megamind is a little edgier. Bad to the Bone, Highway to Hell, Crazy Train, Back in Black, and of course, Welcome to the Jungle. Oh, and obviously, Loving You. Hey. <laughs> it's hilarious anyway, but think about it. When you have a literal god flying around your city for decades, training your cops and pistol safety might fall by the wayside. Really? <laughs> that guy. How, how do I look, minion? Do I look bad? Disgustingly horrifying, sir. Compliments. I think this makes Megamind an even scarier villain, because at least fluffy white cats don't bite. Is there some kind of nerdy supervillain website where you get Tesla coils and blinky dials? Another move to make Megamind more sympathetic for all of his inventions look like piecemeal garbage thrown together with whatever he could find at the junkyard. You can't trap justice. It's an idea, a belief. Well, even the most heartfelt belief can be corroded over time. Justice is a non-corrosive metal. But Just a whole bunch of eloquence and poetry wins. Uh, could someone stamp my frequent kidnapping card? <laughs> you of all people know we discontinued that promotion. I love that the jabs at the hero-villain-damsel dichotomy are happening in the foreground while Metro Man is failing to escape the observatory in the background. And then a crazy expectation subversion with one of the coolest and most powerful looking animated explosions I think I've ever seen. Ha! Ah, is that Minion Skeleton? And I will get back to you! Classy exit. Even in an animated film, somehow David Cross makes slapstick work. An Evil Deeds montage is the fastest way to improve the Obama poster. Okay, so the first thing that stuck out to me in addition to all the obvious art stolen was the World Cup. Yeah, I'd probably steal that as well. But also the Ark of the Covenant, some Emmys, an Oscar, I think? Is that the Maltese Falcon? Next. Are you ready to be a slave army? What you need to know. Planning ahead. Bernard, I'll just be another minute. <sighs> okay. Ben Stiller's attitude about not making this live action slipped into the script. That was from the time Metro Man was played by Brandon Roth. Some attention to detail with the Megamind's piercing green eyes being different from Bernard's brown eyes. Not to mention the same eye consistency when he switched with the warden earlier. Only the future. <laughs> oh, I'm too close. I'm genuinely scared right now. Oh, <laughs> this is why you get Will Ferrell. I've heard so many complaints over the last few years about undercutting emotional moments with comedy, but this is how you do it correctly. Paying tribute to the original hero teacher. Minion! I kept forgetting where it was. You couldn't just remember about the Kilroy was here tag? Really paying off! You're so fit and strangely charismatic! Co compliments. Self-compliments. Self <laughs> Another one of those blinking illicit callbacks. Bernard! You were right about that door being exciting. This way looks exciting. No, it says exit. Megamind does like his sixes. And multiply it by six! Something much more powerful at work here. Chekhov's diffuser gun. Hal? Hal Stewart? Am I saying it right? Stewart. Is this how John Stewart, I mean Hal Jordan, I mean Green Lantern got his part in Lego Movie? Hal Stewart! Prepare! <laughs> 
<laughs> me just casually replacing the door, as if exploding the door was the plan from the beginning. The lady across the hall has way better stuff than me. Yeah, that's something a hero says and reads. You've been blessed with unfathomable power. What kind of power? Unfathomable. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here. Brando is Jor-El with that hair, but also it's Godfather Brando because why not? It's like a joke I'd make. A training slash dating montage is the fastest way to fully establish that Hal is the worst option for a hero and still a creepy stalker. There's this really, really good looking one I've got my eye on currently. And to once more mock how tight superhero costumes can be. Get it? Titan? Only thing that could have made it better would have been a green suit. This is kind of like villain shadowing. Since it's recently come out that Donkey Kong was Mario's pet and therefore Mario is actually the bad guy in Donkey Kong. Clue art? Also loving the reflection of the clues in her eyes being mirrored as Titan flies up behind her. Whoops. Save ya. Saving Roxanne? But seriously, what awesome juxtaposition. As if the movie itself doesn't know how terrible this interaction is. Thinking it's more like Christopher Reeve and Margot Kidder's Night Flight. The lighting and detail of the city and night sky is glorious. And just as a general nod to the 74 Superman scene, I enjoy the opposite outcome. As if he could just go through the same motions without the heart behind it. I love how much of an awkward superpowered being Titan is. Never taking the superhero pose, just sort of flying in whatever position he's already in. There will never be an us. But I have powers. Why? This, this, how? this isn't right. And listen You're to me supposed to be with me. And sort of a solidification of what's wrong with Hal. Somewhere between nice guy syndrome, where he thinks he's owed a relationship, and just a straight narcissistic stalker who doesn't actually see Roxanne as anything more than property. It's a great deconstruction of the nerdy guy finally finding some confidence in getting the girl. You can't also be a terrible human. And the cat rehydration scene was all set up earlier with the storm clouds rolling in. Man, oh man, I think DreamWorks gives Pixar a run for their money with these water effects. And this was eight years ago. The individual drops and how they interact with the characters, the waves in the street. <laughs> Is that a leash? That's a leash. Digging Megamind's outfit to the next level. This fight in the city is really fun, especially with how nonchalant Megamind is about it, just thinking he's dueling a friendly rival like Metro Man when Titan is out for blood. It's also beautifully rendered and a great showcase of the 3D city and DreamWorks' always stellar lighting effects. Consider yourself Hulk busted. That's what Iron Man says, right? And Megamind stick with the space step bomb. You lied to her. I mean, technically he did lie to Minion, so he deserves that. Ah! Brainbots to the rescue. It's made from copper. You're powerless against it. It's the very same metal used to defeat. First hint of the true fate of Metro Man. I need your help. Why do you need my help? Because you're the smartest person I know. More compliments and admitting when you're wrong. No. Oh, oh my giant blue head. <laughs> Self-realization. Metro Man's alive. Some tiny details with the cup rings on the bureau. I mean, look at the hairs in his beard being displaced by Megamind's hand. <laughs> you can tell Megamind had Minion paint the X in the observatory. This is probably my favorite sequence in the movie. It plays into the ridiculousness of their rivalry and how much of it is just what they do. Metro Man could have killed Megamind at any time, obviously. He has no weaknesses. It's also one of the more fun visuals. Also, holy crap, prepare to have your mind mega blown. Metro Man actually blips out for a single frame and appears behind Megamind in that opening scene. Tyler Durden would be proud. That way I could keep my logo. Ha, he showed off his super speed again. Did you miss it? He wasn't holding a guitar and then he was. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of BVS is when Bats is punching Superman and it slowly stops having an impact. And I'm starting to think they stole that from Megamind. Grab some ray guns, hold him sideways, and just go all gangsta on him. That is exactly what Tina Fey would do. So Hans Zimmer did this score with Lauren Balfe, and there have been some decent moments here and there, but this track, I'm the Bad Guy, is the first track to really stick out. <laughs> he doesn't even know his own name. Slash, if he's actually taking that as his villain name, that's slightly cooler. Megamind! Wait, I'm sorry, you're gonna change the channel from a water skiing squirrel on the Ocho? Ron Burgundy would be disappointed. I know the warden has blue eyes, so... Oh, minion. You fantastic fish, you. Reconciliation. Wait, oh, wait, wrong movie. Wait, why is Minion's robot suit a gorilla? And there is no queen of England. Monarchy lessons. Just not a super one. Yeah? What's the difference? Presentation! Also, gravitas, exhibition, and showmanship. The only thing this movie is missing is a magical video game and The Rock. 
or, you know, left or right or anything not learned at the Prometheus Shul of Run. No, you know what? I'd like to see you in a life or death situation think rationally. Plus, in this situation, going to the sides wouldn't necessarily save you considering all the destruction the sliding building is causing. <laughs> Three things. Number one, now that's an entrance. Number two, with such a triumph and satisfying score. Number three, let's have a little respect for public transportation. I love that Mega Mind knows Metro Man so well he even knows what kind of goody two shoes quip he'd use in this situation. Wait, where did goody two shoes come from? Like, bad guys only wear one shoe? Marjorie, meanwhile, one shoe, rich guy. Two shoes. Wealth equals virtuousness? Okay. This has been your Cinema Wins Bizarre Phrase Etymology Lesson of the Week. You're the punk I've heard about. Cat flexing. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> and the baby finally didn't cry this time. Yeah! You're bringing this up now? I did look back. <laughs> You did? For the record, she did, which means she didn't judge the Megamind book by his cover. Old habits die hard. Ingenuity, it's kind of his trademark. We did it, thanks to you. Recognition, finally. Minion's a way better minion than the minions. Oh, what a drama queen. You know, I'm feeling much better now. Minion's alive. <laughs> Reels you in with that little face. Wife win. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Get back, you savages! <laughs> Best response ever. Alright, put your hands in the air. This whole statue unveiling is a callback to Metro Man's. Alright, put your hands in the air. Uh, hey, uh, my kid can't see. Uh, hey, my kid can't see. Sorry, my friend. Some fun visual storytelling you might notice is the changing color of Roxanne's clothing. She starts out in red, the opposite of Megamind's blue. In the middle, as she's getting to know Megamind, she's in purple, a mix of red and blue. And then by the end, she's wearing straight up blue. Ha! Minion got his own statue. Can't and won't complain about a giant robot with a fish head, a blue guy with a giant head, and a girl with a Tina Fey head dancing to Michael Jackson. Because MJ is always a win. I appreciate that they didn't go full on love story with these two. It's realistic that she'd be hesitant but still acknowledges the relationship they've built. This has been the worst day of my entire life. Oh, I mean, I recall something with a zipper. Wait, what? Justin Thoreau wrote Metro Man's song? But why? So if I'm being honest, it was probably a mistake to do Megamind because I'll most likely be eliminating one of my most prolific commenters. Good old best nickname ever. Looks like his first comment was about eight months ago, and since then he's requested Megamind with some pretty decent frequency. Though to be fair, he wasn't actually the first to request it, just the most consistent. Looks like the first was on March 11th, 2016, and then a few since then. But I'm just kidding. I always want to do the movies you guys request because that's the whole point of my channel. Every movie, with very little exception, is someone's favorite. I like to find out why. But it's easy to see why someone would like Megamind. It did all right at the box office, but two main things hurt it. First was costing way too much to make, almost double its biggest competitor, and second was being second chronologically to that competitor, Despicable Me. I couldn't find evidence of it, but I suspect that both movies are based on the same spec script. The writers claim they started this script in 2003 with the basic premise of, what if the villain wins? But the fact that they both had one-eyed helpers who speak broken English and both kept Minion as the name for the villain's helper minions seems to be pretty clear evidence. Could be a coincidence, but it's pure insanity to claim that Megamind somehow ripped off Despicable Me in five months. Something similar actually happens quite a lot, probably more than you realize, and often one will launch a franchise while the other will sadly fall to obscurity, except in the hearts of the fans. For viewers, it most likely comes down to which you saw first. I saw Megamind first, so I'll always prefer it. I love Steve Carell, and minions are a, a thing that happened and is still happening, but I love Megamind. The superhero parody isn't anything new, but they managed to blend in the satire in some fun ways. I mentioned a few times how they poke fun at those tropes while still incorporating them into the movie in a relevant way. It's one of my favorite things about Megamind. Overall, it's such a surprisingly well-constructed movie. That's, that's the best way I can say it. Most everything that is set up pays off. They do a great job of endearing us to Megamind right off the bat with that cute face. And his idea of intimidation using Ozzy Osbourne and ACDC as part of his stage presence is inspired. Like a kid stuck in what was edgy in the 80s. And then it goes out of its way to subvert cliches while sometimes still leaning into others hard. It's a crazy meta movie about how we create villains and heroes. I mean, Megamind's shul for the gifted is next to the criminally gifted prison, and it looks like the warden runs the school, and Metro Man and Megamind seem to be the only real gifted kids there. They were destined, and it kind of seems like designed to be rivals. 
Their belief that heroes need to be made, not born, is proven to work both ways, since Titan becomes the ultimate baddie. Still not super, though. And Megamind wants to be the hero in the beginning, but is pushed towards villainy by his peers. It isn't until there's a hero void that he ends up being made into the hero. If there's bad, good will rise up against it. Ultimately, I like the message that you don't have to be what you were born to be, or even what society tries to make you. Hal failed in that regard. No amount of superpowers is going to make you a hero or help you get the girl. And no amount of dodgeballs and a giant blue head is going to keep Megamind from fulfilling his destiny to redefine what it is to be a hero. You judge them based on their actions. Well, that seems kind of petty, don't you think? There is a very Truman Show feel to the whole thing, though. They know their roles and they enjoy them until they don't, which is why Metro Man leaves. But everyone is sort of in on the joke and it gives the whole universe a unique feel. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that Ed Harris is sitting in a control room somewhere calling the shots. But what a cast. Will Ferrell really has no limits. You can always pretty much identify that it's him, but he consistently impresses me, pulling out emotions even in a comedy. And the close second best performance is from David Cross that never knew that he is. His particular type of humor translates through to an animated character like few do. And everyone else was great too. Tina Fey wasn't given quite enough comedic moments, but still she does damsel in distress really well and nails the dramatic stuff. And Jonah Hill really was born to play a villain. He's really unlikable right from the beginning. Then the details are again insane. The consistency of spikes on everything Megamind owns or makes, just everything in his lair. The fun stuff going on in the background like Titan floating away here and a tiny Titan in the background flying away. The wrinkles created on Metro Man's shirt from a star sticker, let's just call this a motif. <laughs> A well thought out film that deserves a sequel. Sadly, I wouldn't say you should hold your breath. Next week, a newer movie that didn't do so hot. At a strange place called Chewel, Poppet Corn, Espiada, Matrosity, Revenge, Moody's, Melancholy, Stud, Olo.